I don't come into relationships so that you could complete me. I come into it feel already, able to just pour into you. So at age 14, you decided you didn't want to have kids and you didn't want to get married. That was anti everything that was in your atmosphere. Proposals sometimes are used to sort of trap people into mm -hmm. relationships uh -huh. because I firmly believe that you could be committed to a person without a marriage. <laughs> Hey family, welcome to another episode of The Love Lens, the number one show changing your views on love one lens, one episode at a time. Make sure that you hit subscribe mm -hmm, and get all the notifications as we drop a new episode each and every week. I want you to go back to the beginning because you might be missing some gems, okay? So I'm Coach Cass, your host. I'm an author. I just absolutely love pouring into our amazing society and changing your view because sometimes we just weren't raised right. I'm just saying. So today I'm speaking to someone, a long, 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 long time friend in Soror, Annie from New York. And what's really cool about Annie is that she has a different view when it comes to love. So join me in welcoming my sis, your new friend, Anilsa. Hi, hola. Hola. So, Annie, now we were talking a little bit behind the scenes, uh, Dominicana, right? So I want to know a little bit of how you started out in life, right? Like, how did you, how were you raised? Like, I know that you have a different idea of love than majority of the women that I speak to. So let's start back to the beginning. <laughs> Sure thing. So I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic. And growing up, uh, there was a very small town, rural town compared to where we are now. And I think there was about 200 people in the town. And I thought everybody was related to me because everybody was an auntie oh. and family and you didn't close your door and the whole community raised you. And so it was no running water, no electricity. Wow. You went fishing, uh, you climb trees yes. uh, to, to, to grab fruits, you know, you walked barefooted, you didn't close your doors. It was, um, I didn't realize how poor we were until I left the island because you didn't realize how much you were missing in terms of, uh, in terms of, um, uh, material things. But I, I was, I grew up a pretty happy kid because mm. uh, I didn't know what I didn't have. But um, I think it helped to shape my experience and helped to shape how I show up for other people yeah. based on how people showed up for me when yeah. I didn't have any. Yeah. So, wow. You know, like I, I'm Jamaican. So that, that brings back all the joy, the climbing, the mango trees. Oh, man. Running alongside the road, going down to the river. Like I, I did... I did all the things. So, you know, when we were talking, you spoke about a shift in how you saw relationships and a decision that you made very early on. Can you can you share that with us? I absolutely. So what I saw growing up was a very traditional household, uh, a very traditional gender roles mm -hmm. where the whole stereotype of women um, being home, taking care of the kids, uh, this whole notion of barefoot and pregnant um, was something that I could know uh, growing up. Women getting married off very early, especially in my community, because poverty was an issue. Um, mm -hmm. Yet people had a lot of kids for some reason. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, one of the things that you aspire to be was to learn how to cook and clean. Mm. Um, and had to be a wife and mother at a very, very early age. So I remember being about, I don't know, nine or 10, 11, 12, and I already had to learn how to cook, how to clean. So you got trained uh, not to be a professional woman, but you got trained to be a housewife, um, a, a mother, because if you were lucky, that's what you aspired to be. Ooh. If getting uh, 15, 16, 
um, if you were 17 and you didn't have that, it was something wrong with you. Oh, no. I remember my my mom having all four of us uh, siblings by the mm. time she was 17. By, and, by the time she was 17, she had four? Wow. And that was success. You know, when you saw that, like, that's what people value. That's what the society value. Yeah. And um, you know, I saw women being at home, not being fulfilled in mm. the way that I think uh, they should now. Uh, men having other, doing other things outside of home. Um, and that was acceptable and that was, uh, that was acceptable because there were certain things I remember hearing the adults when you're not supposed to listen, you know, saying, um, there's just certain things you don't do with your wife. Mm. So it's so okay for him to do those things outside of the household because, you know, women were there to be mothers, to be wives, uh, um, and for pleasure and not necessarily to be a partner. Uh, so I knew that that wasn't the life that I wanted. You weren't you were feeling that? You didn't want to just be... No, not at all. I wanted some shoes. I didn't want to be pregnant all the t- every year. And, uh, you know, I knew then uh, that that's just... I thought I wanted more. I always knew that. And I felt that I didn't fit in. That I wasn't growing up at the right time or the right place. Mm. And I remember my mom saying, my sister says this too. Like my mom used to say, she, look at us. We can barely afford anything to eat. We barely have food and she wants to be fancy and she wants to do all this and she wants to do all that. And she wants, for me, it was school. Mm. Uh, we had our school was two rooms, uh, two or three rooms in the community and wow. you only went up in grade six. So after grade six, you you better have a man. <laughs> you better have a man. After grade no, six, no. you better have a man? Oh, my yeah. goodness. Uh, that would marry you, and it was a way to be taken out of poverty, mm. right? In that sense, because now you have someone that will take care of you. And were these men, like, older men, too? No, none. I, I mean, not necessarily, okay. but they were some. You mm. know, they were some. Uh, that had more means, mm. but it was just a notion of um, uh, your purpose as a woman is to be a mom and to be a wife. Wow, not necessarily because we couldn't afford. I, at least I'm speaking of the 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 confines of my immediate environment at the time, right? And have the money for school, and I love school. I I absolutely love school. Um, but you couldn't go to school till you were seven in DR. And I wanted to go to school before that. Wow. My brother's a year older. He was going to school. So after I did breakfast and did my chores and everything, I would follow him to school. And they wouldn't let me in because <laughs> I was young. And I would sit outside the classroom like every day. Like I was going to school. They're like, go home. You can't be here. And, uh, you know, sometimes when it would rain, they would let me right outside the classroom. And I did this for like a year. Wow. And. My brother didn't like school. And so I did his homework. What? So by the, <laughs> so, and I loved it. I would help him. And by the time I was seven, I think I went to like second grade mm. because I read the first grade from outside. Right. <laughs> so, right. So I was just always so excited about school because I felt that was the way to get out. That was my ticket out of the, that life. And, and, and what was waiting for me if I stayed was just, I had to get married. So at age 14, you decided you didn't want to have kids and you didn't want to get married. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, (laughs) that was so anti everything that was in your atmosphere. I did not like the life that I was seeing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now that you're 14, you're like, I don't want to know this life. Like, how did you even get out? Education. Mm. I asked. I continued to go to school uh, because I didn't want to talk to boys. I became like a little bit of a tomboy and was riding horses, was trying to always play with my brother's friends, um, not wear a dress, you know, not conform to the traditional values. And I remember my grandma would say like, Nobody's going to want you looking like that. You got to be a girl. You got 
I'm riding, you know, from the whole horse, you know. Um, you know, so I didn't want to do the traditional girly things because in a sense, I didn't want men to be a practice in me Ooh. because I didn't want that for myself. I wanted to go to school. Um, and so after sixth grade, after that grade was coming, I was terrified because I'm like, oh my God, they're going to marry me off. Um, and, um, you know, I went to go to school, but I, I was lucky that my parents did encourage me to do what I wanted to do. I had one aunt that was, that's what, that's how she was. Mm. And she got out and she went to school. She became an attorney. And I'm like, I want to be like her. I'm going to get out. You know, and she was to this day became like my, my, my vision mm. for what I want to be. And then I was allowed to go to school in the city, you know, outside of the town. Yeah. And, and as you could do for transportation it was like a donkey or a horse or something or, or some, 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 rare transportation because we didn't have regular streets yeah um dirt roads yeah i'm sure you you've seen some of that mm -hmm. when you went back home but i was able to go to school we walked a few miles every day wow without the right shoes you know in the heat of the afternoon sun but i had a i had a i knew i knew that was the only way and my mom will always say we don't have any money i'm not going to leave you money when i go but whatever we could do to support you in getting an education, that's the only thing people cannot take away from you. Wow. And I think that thinking shaped me and shaped what I do for students now and the fact that I went into education because we, I mean, I've lost jobs before. I lost relationships. I lost things that I really care about. But that is the one thing I will never lose. It's my ability to be able to rebuild. Wow. You know, and, and and reshape my reality because of the education that I have and the knowledge that I have. Are you someone that goes to all the conferences? You know, you get your CUs for your job. You're always up leveling in personal development. I'm going to tell you one thing. You need your CEUs in love. Join me for Wanted Woman Live, the ultimate non-conference, unconference experience three days in sunny South Florida this fall. This is an experience where women come together from all over the country to be able to be poured into all around love. How do you show up in love? How do you receive love? How do you just have fun with love? Join the sisterhood, an amazing experience created and curated just for you, the professional woman that desires more. Click the link below, wantedwomanlive.com. All right. So when we when we start thinking about where you are, right? So now as a woman of a more mature age, right? Um what is your stance on dating overall? Like are you dating? Are you not dating? Have you been married? Do you want to get married? Did did that ever change? I I I had so much time from that <laughs> uh coming into this country to now and I I have to say that I've been, people evolve, right? I evolve from DR and my teens. I evolve in college. I evolve, evolve in grad school. And I'm still um, evolving. And um, I think that for me, it's more about the person. Um, I have evolving my thinking about, never about kids. <laughs> I still don't like kids. I am okay with, uh, with my students. But I have been lucky. I'm not anti-relationship at all. I value relationship. I value connections. I value commitment. Um, if I have the right person in my life and I have, I have been, um, a long relationship person, a mm. uh, long relationship person. And I've had some very successful and, and great men in my life that I've been with. Um, and they have understood. From the beginning that I've said, this is what I am about and this is what I want and this is what I don't want. And they have accepted that. Some always think they can change your mind. Ooh. I don't understand that a woman doesn't want the fairy tale, right? Uh, what we consider to be the fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And so it's usually the opposite. Uh, some say like, you're the dude, <laughs> you know, you're the dude in a relationship. <laughs> you're supposed to want all these things because that's what every girl wants. Right. And, 
think like I'm just, that's a strategy that mm. I'm saying that. Like if, if she doesn't want that, then I'm good. You know, mm. I don't have to propose that I have to do anything. And then I had this two and a half people that have asked, you know, asked me to marry them. And I'm like, oh my God, I thought we were good. <laughs> you know? Like what happened? You told them no? Of course. Like we were so happy together, you know, until you, you know, you did that. Wait, 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 you know? pause. You had two and a half men. So I'm guessing this was a, a vertically Not challenged individual. You had two and a half proposals. Yes. From two and a half people or one person did this two and a half times? Oh, no, different people. <laughs> when I, in relationships. <laughs> You're like, explain the half. Because I'm um, like, you said half. Like, what is a half a proposal? <laughs> like, well, half is I found the ring in the closet. So, you know, I, I picked the fight. So we ended up bringing you know, so I'm like, what is happening here? We had it. Wait a second. So you had people get down on one knee. Yeah, I had rings. And and they literally said, will you marry me? And you were like, no. I, I, w- I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was just so disappointed. <laughs> because... <laughs> really? Okay, so there are women out here that are praying for a man to get down on a knee. And you're like, listen, you get down on this knee, we are done. Like, why are you doing this? We had a conversation. So nothing. I mean, like, what's so antiquated? Like, what are you going to be on your knee for? Let's just talk about, how, you know, <laughs> like a knee. What is that about? Um, no, I think people need to have adult conversations about what they each want. Hmm. And if I'm communicating to you what I want, it's the same thing as when men are communicating to women what they want, mm-hmm. right? If that's not the right person for you and he doesn't want what you want, it's not on him. It's on you mm. to decide this is not for me because we want different things. Yes. And so as women, um, we think that we could change other people's mind and we could will them into wanting the things that we want. Yeah. And in some cases, men is the same thing um, with women. But um, I'm just very transparent with where I am in that space. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, right now, if I say the word, like somebody will marry me. But that's not where I am right now. I just, I know. So I'm like, wait. So, okay. So let's talk about person number one, right? We'll leave all names off the table. So you're with person number one for a couple of years, for a decade. Like how long were you with them for? Uh, just a few years. This was the earlier, there was, this is the earlier on, um, you know. Twenties? Uh, high twenties. Okay. You know, at, at a grad school when I'm trying to build my life because I was still in that professional like I wanted to be self-sufficient I wanted to do this and that for me that early on uh was going back to DR Mm. going to now I'm just gonna have somebody taking care of me without really realizing Uh all the things fought so hard to leave behind and to build this professional life before you know, I committed to another person. Yeah. Yeah. So this person yeah. was back in DR. Or they were where you were. They, they were, um, upstate when I was go after grass. Okay. So y'all were together for some time and having a good time and all was well. And that was the one shift or there were other things that made you say like, this isn't going to work. Well, we were no longer aligned clearly. Uh, because he wanted, um, he wanted to be a dad. Yeah. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, and for women, for men, you know, that wanted to, that want that, I think it's beautiful. And I think they just need to be with the person. And mm. I couldn't lie. Yeah. I couldn't pretend that I was willing to change my mind. Right. Because especially at that time, I wasn't because I was very focused on what I wanted to build mm-hmm. and how I wanted to build it mm-hmm. um, for myself. Um, later on in life, um, you know, it shifted a little bit, right? Whereas 
Mm-hmm. But back then, it, it it just wasn't a wonderful person. Yeah. And, and I've had some wonderful relationships. Right. I don't re- for one. They have. Because he didn't take it very well. So, okay. Um, so wait. So, okay. Person number one, he wanted a child. So that really was like, okay, this ain't going to work. So now person number two, what was it that made you say, was it just the proposal or was there something else? I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And, and to an extent, like, I was being honest mm. uh, for time. And why would you think that all of a sudden, because I see a shiny thing. I was going to change. Were you guys yeah, living together or no? Living together? No. No. Okay. no. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's like the next. No, step. just yeah, just a very good relationship, and I think, I think that I feel that a proposal sometimes are used to sort of trap people into mm. relationships. Uh huh. Um, because I firmly believe that you could be committed to a person without a re- marriage. Without a marriage. Okay. So and I. Th- you felt I think cool. earlier, oh, that was my thinking. I think differently as a seasoned person. Mm-hmm. Now you think about finances. Now you think about future. Now you think about, you know, those other things. And that's the piece that shifted my thinking a little bit with my most previous, you know, long-term relationship mm-hmm. that we could talk about in a little bit. Um, but in those earlier age, I'm like... Don't trap me. I didn't put myself through a lens of someone else. And I wasn't looking for that safety and security mm-hmm. type of thing mm-hmm. that we're more open to at a later age in our life when yeah. we are seeing retirement around the corner. Yeah, so when you were younger, you were like, I got this. We could have some fun. We could hang out. I'm with you. We're together. Why do I need a ring? This doesn't need to go any further as I build my thing. So now you say your 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 thoughts have shifted for some parts of this. Is there something specific that happened? that made you shift your thoughts towards marriage or relationships? Um, see, and I, something that you just said, right, about the longevity of relationship. Marriage, I don't believe that marriage guarantees longevity in a relationship. I think I have had, in looking at my friends, in looking at other married people around me, I think I have had more meaningful relationships, mm. more honest relationships, mm. more loving and understanding relationships than some people I've seen marry. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because they saw marriage and many women and men see marriage as the end result. Uh-huh. Once you get that, I see a lot of people, they stop working. Mm. They stop the work. They get lazy. Into that relationship. Right. And, and, and for me, my rela- long term relationship have been as committed, if not more, than some of those marriages I've seen because I know that I had to put in the work every day yeah. to have that relationship because I don't have the luxury of like, listen, you can't go know we married. Mm. It's going to be right. too long. So stay longer because you made that financial commitment, you, you concern about divorce and you might have children i didn't have that so in a sense you work a little bit harder to keep it because you have less guarantee mm. you might be just walk out like anything so i i don't see it as somebody having a committed relationship and understanding with someone as any different or in terms of just the relationship part than someone who just happens to be married mm. that's a personal case. that's a different that's not- key of a better relationship yeah that's a definitely a different perspective that i have not heard right so you're like listen i had to put in some extra work because you know homeboy could have left at any time right like there was nothing really stopping him we may or may not have been living together no kids no contracts nothing like bye you know so yeah so you you were putting in a 
uh, more effort. So what what would you say shifted in terms of your thoughts towards marriage? Because you were saying now in the later years, things have uh, shifted for you. So what what has shifted in your thoughts? I I think um, my most previous relationship that, um, well, I guess he's been gone for a little bit longer than I think in my head. But I was with this amazing man for about 12 years. Wow. Um, and that's longer than all out of marriage. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I don't have an issue with commitment. I, I just don't think I should be doing things in a particular way, in a particular pattern, just because other people are doing. Okay. Right? I'm going to do it on my own time. Um, and I don't think marriage defines the, a successful relationship. It's mm-hmm. just some of choice for people mm-hmm. um amazing men um just 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 did everything right um and just understood where i was yeah and how I operated in my needs and um and for me that whole safety and security i feel at that point and even now i'm a lot more secure with my with my professional life mm-hmm. and or um, I'm not searching for the same things professionally, right? Mm-hmm. So I could kind of feel a little bit now yeah. in terms of surge and be okay with our partnerships. Mm-hmm. But um, when uh, this um, person and, you know, everybody that will see this will know is Christopher. Uh, Christopher passed away unexpectedly. Unespec- <laughs> um, and we just about, you know, um, live together to separate apartment, but like in the same area. Mm. And so, um, that was, um, that was a shit for me because he understood about, um, ch- children, but he, it was important to him, mm. right? So here we go again, right? He said he was okay with it, but we said, you know what? Just in the off chance, just in the off chance that we change our mind, at some point I have my ex frozen. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Just in the off chance because this is the person I I, I was going to be with. There was no thought in my mind that, you know, same time we would take breaks too. He allowed me to go live life the way I wanted to live life. Mm-hmm. But this is the, this was my person. And, um, you know, we were picking, see, I was going to marry that one. You were going to marry that one? Mm-hmm. I was open to it. That's the closest I came. <laughs> so, wait a second. So, did y'all talk about marriage? And I'm so oh, sorry yeah. to to hear that um, he passed. Um, so, so, what made you say, you know what, if he asked, I'd be open versus the others? Like, what made it different for him? Well, we had conversations. That's why, like, this whole notion about sitting around as a woman. I, I understand that concept. Like, you're sitting around as a woman, just waiting for this person to bring light to your life. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to marry, marry the man. I know I see some of those things in, in, in social media. Yeah. Uh, a woman asks a man to marry him. Oh, yeah, I know. And people are, like, up in arms and they do all the kinds of things. So this whole thing about just sitting around waiting for somebody else to give you what you want. If you want to marry the man, have a conversation with him and see if he's in the same space. Just like when those men were in the same space in my younger year and I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Nobody should go into these proposals or anything without having a conversation with somebody. Otherwise, you're making the assumption that that person wants the same thing that you want. So we had conversations like, hey, what are we going to do? <laughs> like, just very casual thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we know we're going to be together. So what do you want to do? You know, and we'll talk about what makes sense financially, what makes sense, you know, um, what, what happens if somebody gets sick and, you know, we, we, we approached it in those things, not for security of it, it's going to make us stay together longer if we're married, mm-hmm. but more. For the other parts of it, because mm-hmm. in our mom at the time, there was no like, you know, that's just what it was going to be. It was you and me. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, I, this was a person that now I felt that I, I had what I needed as a person. And he allowed me to continue to do the things that brought me joy. Mm. If I needed to travel by myself, I was able to travel by myself. I, I didn't have these things that in a marriage I feel are restricted. Mm. Like I was able to just pick up and go. I love to travel. And I travel extensively on my own. Mm -hmm. I wake up today and if I have nothing to do this weekend, I said, okay, let me go to Paris. Mm -hmm. Let me go to Dior. Let me go here and there. And that brings me tremendous joy. And I always thought that if I was married, that I couldn't do that. Mm. Uh, and I fear that I wasn't going to have someone that was going to be secure enough to understand that I'm still a person yeah. house of a marriage. And I think that he understood that. Yeah. Um, and, and was comfortable in that space where it's like, let me know what you need, you know? And I am by nature, and many women are a giver and a provider. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm that I'm your emergency person. Like if you get in trouble and you need to, you have one phone call, that's what Lydia says, my sister. If you have one phone call, she says, you got to call Annie because she's going to figure it <laughs> she out. She's going to get you out. <laughs> she's going to get you out. She's going to know somebody who's going to get you out. I'm a problem solver, right? Mm -hmm. I do problem solving for a living yeah. at work. Then I do the same thing for my family. <laughs> if it needs to get done or for my friends. Mm. So always on. I don't get to be off unless mm. I go away. And I need to be with a person and in a relationship where I could be off. Yeah. I don't want to be on All in a time. relationship all the time mm -hmm. and so the most successful relationships for me have been like that one where i walked into his space and he would take away my phone and he will take away my shoes and he will like okay here's your space sit over there let me get you a glass of wine what's going on what do you need me to do mm. to make sure you're good right so yeah. this was a I value relationships with people for a change of pouring into me and, and filling my cup rather than me always filling somebody else's cup yeah. to the point not having anything to pour from. So that's something that I'm learning now in my a little bit of a <laughs> more seizing year that because I date or being in committed relationship for so long, sort of like back to back to back, I realize I haven't really given myself an opportunity to be with me, hmm. right? And, and, and to, and it has taken me a very long time. Like I went into a very dark space hmm. after Chris passed away. Yeah. Every time it starts. Um, and so, um, I, I mean, I went into just, left work depression did he was out of work for a year like i just need a time yeah. uh, to kind of go back to myself right and yeah. reassess and so and then went to another one after that to kind of help heal that pain of of that loss and so now i'm just telling <laughs> myself i need to you know and if i want to see somebody if i want to go on a date i go but i just want to I just want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. That's what I want to do. And if somebody is able to be in that space with me where we could do those things together, great and fine. I'm open to that. You know, I'm mm -hmm. open to the right person in my life. But I'm not going to, I don't feel, nor what I allow myself to feel that because I don't have this thing, this piece of paper or this ring, I have plenty. Um, you know, that I'm less than a woman somehow mm. because of that meeting societal expectations, are, uh, you know, even family. That's one of the things you dread going home. All the older people, like you're not married. They just look at your thing. You're not married. You're not, you're not, you don't have any kids. What's wrong with you? And having to deal with that, you know, l earlier on in my life, there was even a stand where my family thought I was lesbian. Mm. Because I could not understand 
And I'm in a sorority, so I'm always around women. I'm always around my Eastern star sisters. So like, she got to be a lesbian because she never bringing men around. She always around women because I wasn't married. I'm like, you just don't know my life. It doesn't mean I'm not with somebody. She just right. Like, because unless it's the right person, you know, in our culture, you don't bring them home. Right. Uh, but I, I just relationship has never defined who I am as a person and as a woman. I am full as in whole as a person. And, and so I think this is why folks enjoy being in relationship with me, perhaps, because I don't come into relationships so that you could complete me, whatever that is, right? I come into it feel already, um, able to give, right? Able to receive, but also able to, able to just pour into you as my partner. Um, and it's an equal partnership. It's, it's, it's a, let's talk about what we want. Let's talk about what works, what doesn't work. Um, it's that open uh, dialogue and communication that builds relationship. And so when you're coming in it half full, uh, I'm not sure how successful, how successful that's going to be. I think, you're, I think I have found the most when I'm not looking. And I'm, I'm me and... When God is ready to give me another opportunity, then that's what it's going to be. You know, I'm around a lot of people that just, you know, the noise of wanting to be with me and date me and such. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where you just send a text message. <laughs> you know, it's not about just certain needs. You send a text message and you have people that want to hang out with you. But I'm good. And I think we have to be good with ourselves and with who we are and we attract that which we give right and so good tomorrow i could get out of this call and go to the art this evening and not have to worry about a babysitting not have to worry about you know having to check in with someone um, nothing wrong with people who want that um, marriage is a beautiful thing being a mom is a beautiful thing um, I see my sister being such an awesome mom. Um, and I love my nieces and nephew, but I don't have to want what everybody else wants. And I think those expectations and that pressure that we are putting on ourselves as women is making us miserable. It's making some women feel that they're not enough. And so that's a shame. I think that's a shame. If you really want that because you want it, that's one thing, and that's fine. But if you want it because somebody else is telling you that unless you have it, you're not good enough, I think that's a problem. Listen, have you ever struggled when it comes to conversations on dates, maybe a first date or even your 50th date? One thing I know is that we need to have more meaningful conversations. And that's why I created The Love Deck. 60 questions to ask before choosing the one, but really to deepen your conversations. So whether it's with that guy that you're dating or with your mom or your close girlfriends, what I know is we got to speak more to the heart of our people. Grab your love deck today. It's a great gift for others and you could get it right now in our Amazon store. Pick up yours. One side is affirmations. The other side is dating conversations. Get yours today. Pick up the love deck. Ooh, that is so good. Listen, you just said an entire mouthful. I'm like, okay, do I talk about this or do I ask you about that? Okay. All right. Let's rewind just a moment. <laughs> So you said that you were open to marrying this man. And really what I heard is that you found the right person for you. The rest of the people you described, there was not alignment. So I think a part of the problem in society and what I see with many of the women who join um, my coaching community is just that, you know, their, their picker is broken and they choose for the wrong reasons. They choose to marry someone or they choose to be with someone for pressure from the outside, pressure from 
a mother, a parent, or whoever, expectations from others versus seeking within, what do I really desire? And I feel like that is the key to to where you were in your happiest, longest relationship where you like, I would marry this man because you finally got to a place where someone understood who Annie was. Annie could get up and fly, no problem, right? So it's the, the problem is you trying to be with someone who's going to be like, are you going somewhere again? Why are you going somewhere? Why you need to go somewhere? You know what I mean? Like for me, I'll get up and go to Jamaica. My husband has no problem with that. I married the right one, right? So it's just like, I have those same liberties, right? But it's just like, who are you marrying and are you bringing your representative, which many people do, right? They bring the w- what you think will make me sound good so that you want to be with me. And then on the back end, I'm here resentful because I never brought my full self. So what I love that I'm hearing is that, Annie, you bring your full self to a relationship. And you're like, listen, this is who I am. This is how I pour. This is how I give. This is how I seek to receive. And it's just like, if you could meet me there, we can rock. But if yeah. not, I'm good. <laughs> right? You're listening. I'm yeah. listening, right? Like, did, did I catch it right? Did I catch you? Absolutely. That's what it is. And I think when that you trust who you are, uh, when you are authentic about who you are, you allow your whole self to be seen. Right. In a way that you don't have to alter that in every day. I, I, I don't like dating. I think dating is archaic, you know, um, because you don't see the person when you go on this factor dates. Right. You don't really see the person. Like you say, the representative cho- shows up and you're sitting there trying to listen um, to figure out what part of you you're going to let them see how are you going to adjust who you are to match what they want when you should be doing the opposite you show up as you are and hopefully this person appreciates who that is and if he doesn't it's completely okay you go ahead and you find someone else that matches what you're looking for and then I'll do the same. And it doesn't have to be a fight. It doesn't have to be a big thing. That's exactly how my breakups go. Like, I don't have this, like, explosive things. Wait a second. So you said dating is archaic. So what do you, what do you, you don't date? What you do? Not in that way of, like, I'm sitting here waiting for some man to ask me out to dinner. Okay. Like, you find someone that interests you. How do you find them? Let's let's take it basic. How are you finding someone that interests you? I don't look. Mm. You know, I see people. You, um, see you people. know, I I am I, I don't seek anyone. I live life, right? Mm. I go out and about. I I do this. So you go outside. You do go outside. You don't just sit in your house waiting for oh. someone to knock on the door. Archaic. <laughs> okay. If you're looking for something and it's don't live in your house, you got to go somewhere else where it might be, right? Um, and for some people, that means social media. For some people, that means uh, the bar. By some people, that means the supermarket, whatever it is. But what um, does it mean for you? Like, what are you doing? I, I, I'm, I, I want you to give away some details. Like, how do you, what does your out and about look like? What is that? Uh my out and about is the world, right? My out and about is picking up and going to another country. It is, it's, it's, I don't intentionally look for a man. I just don't. I don't, I don't go out like, oh, let's see if somebody's going to ask me out today. Mm-hmm. Um, if I am, if I am in the supermarket and I see somebody that I'm interested in, what I, I give a look, you know, or, you know, as you're walking around, it's, God puts people in your path that are, are supposed to be in your path. I'm a strong believer of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I may do a million different things. And if God's not ready for me, I'm not going to be ready. Mm-hmm. So I surrendered to the fact that I'm not the only person in charge, right? Mm-hmm. My job is just to be open to possibilities. My job is to love me. Mm-hmm. My job is intoxicated by me. And okay. who I am, 
and to be happy and to and to have joy in my life and to treat people well and to treat people with respect um and to, and to build partnerships and 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 show up even walking down the street and yeah. if a person sees me and wants to talk to me that's great if i see somebody that I want to talk to, I say hello. You know, and oftentimes that starts it. But I don't think it's about time and space. I don't think it's about where you go look. I think it's about who you are. Hmm. And wherever you are, you could be in your car. I mean, I've had, I've been in the car at a stoplight. And whatever the reason, you know, I've met passes by in the car. I mean, like, try to pass as a number, you know, through the thing. So I, I think that is what you give. I think it's what you give. And it's not just about the man. It's about just people, good people, good friendships, you know, coming into your life. If you don't like yourself enough that you feel you need someone else to make you love you, then it's not about them. It's about us. And I understand why Many of us feel that way because we have been conditioned from birth to believe that unless we have this external things to complete us, that we not ourselves. Mm. And I think until we as women and men that are not, you know, don't have what they want, uh, until we shift our thinking to just being intoxicated with ourselves, like that's how other people get intoxicated with you because you walk around with this air of like, I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm good. Like, I look at this place. I'm my car. I could pick up and go. I just went to the R two weeks ago and bought an apartment. Like, you know, like, I'm good. I could do all these things for myself and be okay so if you want to come into my life like you gotta step it up because i'm not looking for somebody to pay my bills i'm not looking for somebody to pay my car to pay my rent i i could do those things by myself but it is not wake up next to the right person on those cold nights i'm not i'm not opposed to that at all um when when i'm ready and when i I meet the next great person, which I will meet, you know, then I'm completely open to being intoxicated together with that person. I'm just not going to do it just because somebody else is telling me to. Mm. It's telling me that I'm supposed to. What is for me, what God has for me, nobody's going to take. And, and this notion that she cannot possibly be okay because she doesn't have a man like that's just ridiculous to me right. completely ridiculous and so the times that i have been um single which by choice right mm -hmm. and in the time right now i want to be in a relationship i just could be in a relationship right um because you're supposed to have people in waiting <laughs> hey come on people in waiting People, you're supposed to have people in waiting. You got a, you got a waiting list. You got a waiting room. Annie, let me find out. You got a, you got a, <laughs> come you're on. Always Next. Supposed to have a waiting room. You're always supposed to have a wait list because if you surround yourself with the right people, um, you know, there's always people that appreciate you and, and want to be in your life, you know, and I'm good. Oh, so good. So question, do you ever feel moments of loneliness? And if so, how do you deal with those emotions? Because I find that, you know, sometimes at midnight, you're like, dang, it would be nice to have somebody come rub my feet. Da, 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 da. Like, what do you what do you what do you do with that? So you don't just send a random text to a random person. Like, what do you what do you do with those kinds of emotions? Like, how do you work through that? Of course, those happen. Anybody who tells you that doesn't happen, you know, we are by nature people who enjoy companionship, mm -hmm. right? I companionship um, with the right person. I prefer to be in a relationship than not be in a relationship. So yeah. I am a total relationship person. Uh, most often, I'm in a relationship than what I'm not. 
So those things still happen. I think this year has been particularly uh, more challenging for me emotionally because I moved away from my village. Um, mm-hmm. Even though I'm only in New Jersey, I never thought I would say that. But I mean, <laughs> that was New York. Um, you know, um, this is you know a great opportunity that Jersey afforded me professionally that I couldn't turn away. Um, but I'm away. I was away from my sorority chapter, right? I'm away from my Eastern Star chapter where I love. I'm away from my mom and my siblings. I'm away. I feel like I'm away from my village, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, get across that bridge. I don't know a lot of people in Jersey yet. Um, so yes, in general, I feel that sense of like, oh, like today, I don't work today. You know, normally I'm like, hey girl, can you just come over? It's very different to come to downtown Brooklyn uh, than it is to get across that bridge and pay the George and spend $20 to come over and see me. So I do feel those moments. Um, and I get away, travel and connect, you know, pick up the phone and talk to my folks. And, and absolutely those nights when you have a nightmare, you know, and, and you wish somebody was there when you wake up, um, those times do get a little lonely. Um, but, um, loneliness doesn't mean you're alone. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I feel that besides myself, like I have a bigger like purpose. And so when I, um, I was like 38 for like, 12 years. Like I just, I don't know, like 28, 32. I didn't like 34. I was, just, I, didn't, I got to 38 and I stayed there for like ever. I was 28 for like five. Ay, ay, ay. On my knees, they, my mom used to throw me this little surprise party every year. It, all my coworkers, everybody, 28, the card, the cake. <laughs> and, my niece, and my niece, actually, she would make me a card every year. And then she will put the same age, happy 28, Auntie Annie, right? And then she started growing up and she's like, Auntie Annie, <laughs> I'm an extra age every single year. And you the same thing. Why? Why? <laughs> to my party anymore. But you know, so then I was like 38 forever. And so I said, if I make it to 50, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling, I'm telling the truth, right? And so and, uh, last year, when I turned 50, I think it was last year, you know, I lose track. Yeah. When I turned 50, you turn, I, you, you'll tell your age when you turn 50. Then after that, yeah, I stopped counting again. I don't like odd numbers. So I'm going to be 50 till I'm 52. Uh, so I said, I will tell the truth and I'll have this big party. And at that time, I said, jokingly, I said, and they're going to think they're going to a birthday party and it's going to be a wedding because nobody's going to be expecting it. Right. But what happened happened. Mm. And, uh, and, um, and so I said, you know what? I save all this money to have this big celebration of my life and my 50. I said, I got to do more than that. Right. I had to celebrate differently. So what I did was I made a year. I had a shirt and everything. Um, it was a uh, 50 and grateful. Mm -hmm. A year of gratitude and service. So I took that money and started traveling, doing service projects. So, and, and, and doing like trips to, to heal my soul, right? And to Mm -hmm. moving to the next half a century. So, um, this in the last year and a half, I volunteer in Bali, uh, teaching at a school. I volunteer in Peru. I just recently, my last trip was in Peru where I was volunteering. I climbed Machu Picchu nice. after my surf project. I volunteer in Costa Rica. Um, I have a trip to Ghana. I, 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 all these different things that I did to give back, right? Mm. It, it certainly has been grateful because despite the challenges that I've had, um, despite the losses that I've taken, I've had a, you know, I have a grateful life. I've had some wonderful people in my life that no matter what have my back. Even, yeah. even men that I'm no longer in a relationship with, I am friends with people that I've been in relationship with. 
like friends, you know, like, yeah. hey, come put on the wall. And they do it because we have a level of respect for one another. And mm. we just realize that, you know, we wanted different things and our visions and our needs were not aligned. But that does not mean that that's not a good person. Yeah. You know, I always like that if I chose you to be in my life and you chose me, it means that you're a good person. Mm. So I never stay too long in a relationship if I know that we're going to end up hurting one another. And I think sometimes we stay too long yeah. in relationships that is skew the next chapter in our life because now we're so hurt and so damaged yeah. uh, because stayed when we know we shouldn't have, you know, so, so I, 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 I've, I've, I've been blessed. So what I'm hearing is, you know, through times of loneliness, it's like gratitude helps you to rise above it, right? The understanding of how far, how much you've accomplished, what you've done, what you're able to do, who's less than. It's like living better in that space helps you to rise above like, okay, my village isn't here. I'm not with this person. It's just like those thoughts will come, but coming to a space of gratitude helps you to shift into a beautiful place. Yes. And it's okay to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay um, to not be in the most joyful space sometimes because what I see is that that's temporary mm -hmm. right that if i i might have felt a little lonely last night but i woke up this morning yeah and this morning i have another opportunity to do one percent better than i did yesterday to change another life that i didn't get a chance to change yesterday um so it is is it's, it's fine but I all I don't make decisions um, based on just feelings <laughs> and emotions that could be temporary, yeah. right? I, and and sometimes we do that just because we feel that we just settle for the next person that walks into our lives and and put away um, that which we know is important to us, and that's really what the thing is. We, we settle for relationships that don't serve us well. And then we're surprised when that person doesn't change. And oftentimes they're very honest. They are showing you exactly who they are, mm. but we're choosing not to believe them because we don't want to be in that space at 10 o'clock at night. Mm. Right? Yeah. So are making this choice to forego your best judgment and forego what you really desire and deserve just so that you have somebody next to you, you can't be surprised when it doesn't work out and when that person is not serving you because we knew this going in. So you either adjust what you want um, or... <laughs> You know, they never know what's going to happen. Your ambitions are not aligned. Annie, man, I, this is better than I thought it would be. It's been like 20 years since I've spoken to you. I saw your sister the other day. She was like, man, this was going on with Annie. I was like, oh, we got to have a conversation. And this, this, this was just so eye opening. You know, it's just like, I love, you know, the perspectives that you've shared because they're just so different, right? Like, I don't believe that many women feel the same way or maybe they do, but they don't act in the confidence in which you operate, which is just so beautiful. Right. So I just want to say thank you for sharing your journey and sharing just a piece of what life could be like if you were just good with who you are, what I believe as a wanted woman. So any closing thought before we leave here today? Yeah, I just hope that women love themselves enough to show up as they are in their authentic self. And um, so long as you want yourself, other people can help but to want you. And so that all the people wanting you does not define your worth, right? Mm. And, and certainly I'm not against relationship. I'm not against people that want to be married and have children. I just think that it has to be with the right person. 
and and it has to be we have to speak the same language right i speak spanish i can be speaking spanish to a partner that only speaks english and expect us to understand each other so long as we speak in the same language so long as people are in the same space emotionally um coming into a relationship healed for the most part right not perfect but in the journey of healing I think that we're going to be so much more fulfilled as individual and we're going to attract that which we want. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. All right, family, you heard it here today. Another perspective on love. I pray that this has blessed you in your love life and especially for my ladies out there. It's time to make a shift. Now, We do have a resource called The Love Deck that you never, ever want to miss out on. Make sure you get on Amazon and get your copy today. It's a deck of cards to help you have more authentic, meaningful conversations. Because like Annie was saying, at the end of the day, you got to be you and really speak up about what you need and what you want. So in the meantime, in between time, I want you to make sure to subscribe. Okay, make sure to hit the notifications and I'll see you next time on the next episode of The Love Lens. Keep loving. Keep laughing. Keep living. Bye. So we are trying out the love deck. So let's just do random. I like this one. I like that. I knew I, that one. I <laughs> One and one men love that. Y'all, this is about to be good. So we played with these ones already and they were good. They was like right on the money. They was good. On one side, it has affirmations. On the other side, it has like a question. So we got to answer the question. So he going to read the affirmation part. And then on the other side, it's going to have a question. The affirmation part is I embrace. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a good one. I have these wanted woman cards from Coach Cass, our good dear friend, and she made these uh, wanted woman cards. And I am a wanted woman by you. (laughs) Let's get that right. Right, right. So (laughs) we're gonna read, it's like a little question and an answer. Okay. All right, so this is one of her cards. It says, what is your favorite family tradition? Our family tradition, our favorite family tradition is to go to church on Sunday. That's true. What is your favorite dance move? (laughs) My favorite, like right now, my favorite dance move? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see. Show me what you're working with. All right, let me show you. All right. Ow! Ow! Yeah! That is the favorite. Ah, that's the favorite. You've been seeing this right (laughs) away. So yeah, you you probably have. Yeah, that was the move that caught your attention. What you talking about?